let's set it up in the link and let's do the Session six now, I think. Time flies. Mm. Yeah. Next class will be at least. Uh, I think it will be mm, not here. Maybe fifteenth. Okay, let's look at what HGQN is doing. So, bin Python nice, because bin Python is actually linking to user bin Python and in Python 3. That's Python, I mean, Arshinox is Python, Python 3, because you know, this links to user bin, so this is the same as if you do. User in Python. I mean that that's just the shebang, you know. That's the shebang. So now what does this uh invalid syntax? Of course. You have invalid syntax in there. Anyways, so let's start it by Python. And now we can edit it nicely. So now yeah. Step time has to have argument, so now is this and is not defined because and is mm, well you could just do and that's a new daytime parsed from a string and you do it com completely opposite uh, I guess you want to we want to set up time we want to stringify time so that's uh, you know this but you are you saying remaining class ah remaining class time percentage okay hmm so I would what I would do is convert convert it to Unix time so Python daytime daytime Unix time because that's like a single single integer and we can calculate it uh, most simple way. What? Convert the time, daytime to Unix time stand and convert back to Python. So, time zones, UTC for timestamp, blah blah blah. Wait, I'm just total seconds. What? Jesus. Again. Yeah, this is what I want. Data and in time, make time to put the time to pull. What? Jesus. Now. Because hmm. mm -hmm. maybe we don't care about the date, but I guess we do. Anyways, let's just import time. Not daytime, daytime is time is in the daytime, I think. Because daytime time, you know. Ah, that's that's bullshit. Uh, but um I don't need time. Time make time. Make time. Okay, so we do need time. And that is make time. 
time table this is not as simple as I thought what time table time table yeah so if we well we can do it mm. from timestamp I just copy this Um, or it can be even never mind okay so it wants integer exactly so that's same just the microseconds are not there so that's still good good enough so anyways uh, let's do convert date time to unix time mm. date time so it will take, yeah, it will just return time, make time, date time, time tuple, time tuple, come on, what happened just now, time tuple, so that should work. Yes. So then, uh, yeah, as as your code was, the end will be well. Let's make it two two hours. So if you have now, we can do the ta now plus daytime time delta, and I think you do hours two. Yes. Well. We will make it shorter today, just 90 minutes, because I have way too much things, yeah. So that will be the end. <coughs> so then uh, we have now an end. So if we do the convert, well, end minus now. Yeah, we have this much seconds so yeah actually let's make it a script so we have ipython here i mean the jupyter notebook here and that's actually interesting um, idea because i also wanted to like calculate breaks so let's make it remaining class time so we definitely need input date time, input time for converting to Unix time for some reason. Maybe that's a better way for getting time and time delta. It's always nice to write what we want. So then we we can just. Um, I'm a little bit quick, so I had coffee, coffee, so just stop me if you are not catching up. Highlight in IRC, that's the best. Yeah, good. So we need this. Let's make a doc string. Convert daytime to um, Unix time int. So then, uh, definitely. So we can do the main, uh, which will be like now is daytime, daytime now, and end will be like remaining time. Let's do it in, in minutes. It takes time in minutes. Default is 90, and yeah, we will see. So that's uh, now plus date time time delta minutes 90. Actually, if this this is this is not uh, so clear the time delta. No. At first look, so yeah, we can just. Uh, have a documentation of that because it takes arguments exactly 
in the no, my point is it's written somewhere yeah so it either takes days seconds microseconds milliseconds minutes hours or weeks so you definitely have to specify exactly those uh, microseconds as as this oh you can do even minus yeah so just to keep in mind because it might not be super obvious at first look so uh, we have this and now we can we calculated the remaining time I mean the well, the now is just now but we want to calculate it over and over so it will be a loop so main will be actually a loop and thinking it will be a loop and yeah the percentage is easy to calculate okay so we get total total time yeah so total time total class time will be convert this convert well the function can be definitely shorter but uh, you get the idea come on con and minus now and now well hmm let's do it better way our total class time is well hmm I don't want to do while true I want to set some meaningful condition but uh, I also don't want to have two variables well I, I guess I, I will have to yeah let's just do the remaining class time will be total class time for now and well remaining class time is larger than one so I mean zero because at the zero it will well, actually it will be one second and then it will be false so let's do the now again and remaining class time will be minus one and we can we have time sleep so we can we have time inverted so we can do time sleep there is perhaps better way to uh, do the calculation more precise not super precise because what will time sleep does is just run you know sleep one and I mean it can be pretty precise but I wouldn't calculate some atomic I mean you know some specific uh, very uh, very complex device around it there are definitely better ways I heard on the other hand, the precision of time and sleep is better than the, their Unix equivalence. Oh, so it's pretty good, they say. So let's skip it and keep it as it is. I mean, class time minus one, and then let's just print. I guess that will be another function. Uh, let's just test it now. Print remaining class time. That's our main defined, and we can run main, run main. Okay, that doesn't work. Like, we have some error. Time made time, yeah. So, volume is a bit low. Okay. Thanks. Hmm, is it? Home. No, I think let's just power control. Recording. Hmm. I guess I lowered it a bit during the week. Nice. Is it better? Yeah, fun size, sure. 
Well, you know, if, if the record's in. Yeah. Nice, okay. Um, the record's in full HD, so. Is it? Yeah, at least 150. So we had some error in here. Let's just debug it a little bit. So that's this is okay. Common class time. Yeah, I did. I think I did the error in here. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Now it works. So now we just calculate. Uh, so we have, you know, um, this is like hundred percent, and one person is this. So, um, you know, if we calculate like fifty percent of of the, yeah. So when and remain, yeah, okay, when the. Remaining remaining class time will be two thousand seven seven hundred. It will be at fifty percent. So let's just make it a function from this. So we get you know print percentage. So total and current remaining. So. Uh, this is math a little bit. I have to. I have just. I have just to try it. So we left hand to print stuff and we'll print. You know, it will, it will be a nicely formatted percentage format. Cran. I mean, reset. And the PRCT will be. You know, total slash remaining. Okay, let's just try it. Because remaining, let's say, will be like 5337. No, that's not good. 5337. No, also not good. I think I have to do the one percentage. Okay, I just have to you know, do it simply, then we can. Um, one bit will be total so that's R54 and then the remaining so if we do yeah that's our yeah okay that's it so remaining one bit yeah. I mean let's let's name it one unit one unit So that should print, yeah, let's do it, print percentage, come on, mm, there's some tag, total class time, remaining class time, floating windows are evil, Nothing happens. How come nothing happens? Hmm. That's weird. Let's tap it and run it again. Jesus, who is making these sounds? Ah, yeah, of course. Typo. Okay, yeah, let's just do. Yeah, you get the idea. But let's let's print it more nicely. So let's also print uh, like print. Well, let's do it. Just return this. So that will not print, that will calculate percentage. And let's print one thing. 
And actually, wait, first things first. So that's, um, how is it? Python format. Mm, helper. Set up time work. No. Uh, Python format. It's just, maybe it's, yeah, here. So we want to print numbers and with the, with at least, Jesus, somebody is sneezing here, it's super annoying. Let's just, no, stay out, stay out, stay out, out of office if you are sick. Nobody is interested in your, whatever. So, what's new? We just want 2F, I guess. Just try it. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Now it's working very good. So, how is it looking now? I have to stop it again. So that's not working. Come on. It's 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 I just copy it. I'm I'm super lazy. Super lazy. Yeah, because it will be nice, it will be you know Right, manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell? This is a Python is too smart. What? What's this? Yeah. So what the hell? We have zero six two F, and I did zero six two F. I get it because the percentage is no. It should be. It should be integer. You know. Otherwise, this, this wouldn't work. So, what the hell? 062F percentage. Hmm. This is weird. I really don't get it. I guess what I will do is just make it, uh, you know, things you can fix. Because I really have no idea. It should work and it doesn't. So I'm giving up. I will just do what I wanted to do return and let's print one and that's the okay. That is mm, Yeah, so we will first print the calculate. Well, and we already get pretty long line. Come on, why don't you? So that's pretty long line, this. So we will just do new line in here. 
and nice, nice, nice adapt. So that will be the first. Let's just make it also one and zero. You know, I'm stupid. This is probably it. Because, uh, yeah, but I, just, I will just set a percentage and I will print it here. Maybe that will work, we'll see. So anyways, that's, that's the first. And this will be a second. Which will be the remaining class time. Invalid syntax, of course. invalid syntax because I'm missing this let's do it nicely again no time sleep time sleep has issues now so format format is this so let's make it here and yeah this will work no still yeah Comment, it's this. So, mm -hmm. of course, I too long function and typo. Come on, go to hell. <sighs> Jesus. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Now we get something else. Cannot switch from automatic field number into manual field specification. So let's just uh, remove this. And now it works. And this is bullshit. Remaining class time. Remaining time is not even defined. Ah, it's here. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Stop all, run it. Now it's working as we, as we should because we get the error. I was returning some string and then I was printing the ho whole thing anyway. So now just the issue with the remaining class time. Probably when I stop it, it's yeah. And also let's print this nicely. So let me guess now. Maybe I will. No, I really don't get how it's. Maybe it's like three, one F. And stop. No. I don't know. That's your homework. Do it nicely. Yes. Jesus, this iPython is getting in my nerves. No, I don't get it. I do get it. So we can keep this running and actually right now we already wasted this much hours. So we can keep this running. And um, we got because we are printing more and more and more. So this will you know uh, print lots of lines. But you can also do uh, like print to the STDL directly. So it will just uh, overwrite it. So let's actually do it. That would be also nice. You can save this script. I'm feeling pr proud of myself. I never coded a whole week, then I code a whole script in just uh, 60, I mean 30 minutes. So good, that's awesome. Okay, git, 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 git. Jesus, I hate this. File, say download us Python. Now let's go here, let's go click here because it somehow, somehow it doesn't. Yeah, now it works. Oh, personal, Python beginners, remaining class time. 
I don't want spaces, I want this. So now somebody's highlighting me. Let's just have a quick read. <laughs> yeah. So Python. Also, as an interesting note, maybe I gave you. Uh, Simplify this a, a bit. Coding UTF can stay, but these ins I don't care about them. And I also want if name equals main, then run function name. Otherwise, even if you import this, it would always run. And this I wanted to mention. So previously I might told you that you have to do uh, env and python. Don't do that. Just specify directly. You can have a look in... I was asking about this yesterday. Yeah, well, Lots of uh, uh, scripts do that. You know, yeah, they are very specific about which python they run. So we can see there are lots of um, python 2 uh, stuff still. Some of them are specifically for Python 3, and some lots of them are just linking to the Python, which in Arch Linux is Python 3. So note that don't use the um, env, let's just run this. So if we, I mean, let's just directly specific shebang user bin Python, or maybe it's even in bin Python. Yeah, because that's a symlink, of course. So let's just make it executable. We can do it. For the, our user and remaining class time now we run it so as well we keep printing so let's uh, fix it to do the std out yeah so that's import sys phone please yeah sure 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 you can just zoom in you know yeah, it's tiny you can have multiple screens Sorry. Uh, anyways, mm, import this and then do where is it? Future. That's for Python two. <laughs> import from future. Import print function. But anyway, we want to do this. Yeah, let's try it out first. Import this. Uh -huh. Yeah. Anyways, that doesn't make sense now, but uh, you see it works. Hmm, we can do a flag. Well, let's do the flag nicely. std out true. So, if std out, do this. I mean, we will make it. Else, do this. So if it's std out, we can do the. Well, we can do import only if you are specifying um, the std out true. But let's do it nicely. Our printing is to std out. So how do we do that? This is std out, right? And I guess just we just copy this. Still, it's a string. Well, let's do it even nicely. Thing to print. Let's do it just once. That should that this should work. And print. Thing to print. Oh, make it nicely. The f I don't like this variable name, but you get it. And that should work. No, it doesn't. I'm not even sure if we will make what we planned, but this is still interesting. We have uh, time for next session, and I will prepare more nicely 
for the for the web, web stuff and I will I will definitely mention it but uh, let's just fix this you will definitely want to fix this I guess we have to do new line character that's also interesting so we can it's a string so we can do this I guess well to uh, let's just yeah now it no I guess we have to do std out first the new line hmm well let's just try it because this will keep printing new line this is not what we want yeah this is not what we want we want to print it just once so we will do if std out do this too much steps and then it should work no hmm what's wrong Let's try in different. Whatever. I think that doesn't it will not change anything, but let's try it. No, it's not in the terminal. Ah. This is you have just to have to try it and see. Hmm. I don't know how to do the override. So that will be to do. I will get this uh, script and we can fix it. Uh, do override. You get the idea, right? You get what you have to to do right so let's make uh, a breather one minute no well that wasn't one minute but we will get what we want to what we wanted to do which was Let's just do sublime fast editor. Yeah, this can stay. Uh, so previously we had some uh, users with uh, Tenera, so we did just ATC, but we can do the uh, Batman stuff. I wanted to do a while ago fast editor arch. So definitely because the ATC thing. So let's just do. Is it optional? Filter is defined. So let's just do this as for all. Unless you are spark cache plus one package. Is it correct? I may maybe way too fast again. So let me get a. Well, let's just test it now. Because what, what we will do, this is what I wanted to say to print. Actually, we have it uh, in the class. Yeah, we have it here. And here. Come on. Hmm. Yeah. So. HDQN had the idea for the uh, remaining class time. I think that works as it's as it's, it is now. Well, I kept it running here, I think. Yeah, so you see how many lines there are already. So we have still like. No. 
I, I have to keep scrolling down but yes yeah, it's like 80 minutes so you can you get the idea you can play with it do it more nicely and what I, my to do in the script in here was that uh, I want to overwrite the line so you keep it like you know how to say it maybe yeah so this is the i3 status so this is the same line as, as here below and you know it keeps overwriting it doesn't print each uh, new line on each uh, line so i want to do, to do the same for the remaining class time and i thought that std out will do the, do the trick but it's not uh, exactly what there are some things which are not working properly and you can definitely you know find it you know I, you know, if you like feed Python uh, override line std out, you know, this is probably the trick. I don't want to try it anymore. It's your, it's your homework. Yeah. So, okay, let's skip this. Um, now we want to print all the packages in. Well. Let's see what it will do. This will actually do a lot of stuff with the size group user and time access. So, file start. That's not executable anymore. Yeah, so, we just run Python. That's also okay. And result JSON exists. So, you can just remove it because the result JSON is, uh, is this thing. We don't care, about, care about it. So, the reason why it tells me the, well, now I won't get, get to it, but the uh, reason why it tells me it's there is that because it's this X is there, and if I had just a W, it would overwrite it, but I, don't, I didn't want it to overwrite it, so I did X, so it, I could do, uh, like, try, and if there is the error number 17 with the files exists it can end nicely it will not crash but um, we don't we don't need that right now so let's create the result so we can do the cut result json again oh it's empty i think it's the ends with yeah ends with is well of course because nothing ends with just a dot Mm -hmm. Everything ends with a tar exe. So we just want to do this. Now it should work. And remove it again. Hmm. Nice. Unicode decode error. I have a three clients. Start uh, line 33 and open file and grab V. Oh, I'm doing some nasty stuff here. I'm opening the files and <laughs> reading them, so you will not read those. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. That's pretty dumb. Yeah, we, we don't want to do that. Yes. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, let me just upload it. PTV, TV, no. How is it? PT, PT. <sighs> Jesus, I forgot. Let me check. I have it in here. Some personal stuff. Link it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PT, PTPB, PV. Okay. PTV. What? It's a pretty stupid URL name, you know? Could na name it nicely. Gosh, yes. PTBP. I have it, so I even wrote it stupidly. Uh, it's just six elliptics script. So it's PTP. Jesus. Only dump name, you know? And it's HTML form 
and oh, sample file sample file git 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 jesus personal python beginners so which file uh, we just upload maybe couple no we just can do only one so let's do this car current file uh, Paste. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink coffee in here. Yeah, this is nice. I still didn't, uh, you know, get got used to it. So this is our current current status. So we get. Uh, uh, yeah. You know what I will do? I will just stop this. This is not nice, and I will just do a uh, on six. On my workstation six, uh, I mean workspace six, I will just do. No, 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 it was there already. So, and you know, remaining class thing can also take some arguments. Either st sys arcs or just arc parser, which is nicer. So right now, yeah, we have 60 minutes still. Well, let's make it 50. So remaining class time. Jesus, you see the error? It doesn't take the remaining time properly. It takes it from here. So that's easy fix. Discover the bug. Now it works. Well, actually, you know, the percentage should be like 60%, but you know, that's pretty specific error. Uh, well, yeah, now it works uh, with the. But it would be nicer if it just printed. Let's just actually try it. What it will do when I do 4. I mean, because I don't understand how this works. This is better. Eh, whatever. Let's get back. So, this is our all my packages in our package Batman, and so we get the size. Uh, everything it belongs to root and group root, and we get some time access. And you know, we, you could do some crazy stuff like um, you know. Where did I install these packages and stuff? But you, you definitely would use Patsman for that, and this database not do it, uh, uh, you know, from the end, just from the files like this. But maybe like if you if you are backing backing a system and this is the only thing you you would get, this may be a way. But anyways, as I was saying, uh, five minutes ago or so, we had this and uh, there was this um, project. Where is it? Simple program. So list files in workagement Batman, download packages and have a dictionary with keys, name, versions, information just from file name, and we can do the some package info. So I didn't haven't prepared for this, so maybe some some smart guy can tell us how to do some stuff, but only thing we will do now and then we will move to web stuff is uh, using your gigs to get uh, the, the package name and version. So, as we saw, let's close this. And as we saw, we have, yeah, we can take, for example, this name, and let's use regex101. There are multiple uh, things like this, but this is what I am used to. So, regex. What's regex? Well, you know, regex, yeah, just do some quick talk about it. It was made by this guy. No? Yeah, here it is. Stephen Cole Clean, I guess. Clean with K. So, rational expression. It started with computer science and formal language theory. Sequence of characters that define search pattern. So you might notice, you might saw things like that. And for example, there is like email regex standard. So if uh, if you see some 
uh, you know, if you see uh, some pages. What? Come on. We are happy. Okay, so you might see that uh, some pages might tell you, "Hey, your email is not valid uh, email." So this is the che thing that checks it. We have uh, some diagram. So really, thumbs up to these guys who made it. Really crazy stuff. But you see, in Python, it's a little bit more uh, shorter because uh, different uh, Regex engines take it differently. This is. <laughs> This is something, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Perl is sometimes called write-only language, so only the guy who wrote it gets what what is really happening here. One error in here, and it's broken. Anyways, we really don't have to do this. We will do much simpler gags. Um, well, anyways, just to explain, you know, you get the you get some string, you get uh, some search pattern, and you get uh, you get the results. You can either filter it or just match for the string. And what we will do, we will get uh, catching groups. And this is pretty easy example, I, I would say. So the way we get the explanation here. So let's zoom zoom in it zoom it in a little bit more. Yeah. So just word. So it will just match single word. So you just want we want to do we can do specifically from 0 to 3 so that, that would that would match lip but we want to just do you know uh, until matches between 1 and unlimited times so we get the match 1 is lip wmf and then it will actually get a little bit tricky but I think we can help it a little bit because mostly I would use this as a helper this x x t. I just. Mm, I think this should work. Yeah, not much is found. How come? Maybe this. Yeah. I hit the space. So each package has uh, x eighty six slash. I mean underscore sixty four. We can verify that by counting clients. So this match packages. Oh, okay. So that's not correct. Because some of these packages are not for Yeah, because some of them have any. Yeah. Any, okay. We can still do that. So uh, we get our words, and let's directly do this. So this will be our first catching group. Then we can get another catching group. Well, first to the slash, there will be always be a slash in between. So then we will get another catching group for the version, which will be a group of. Any number, any dot, and any slash, and that's our group. Uh, actually, we, just, we don't want this, so that's nice. Now, then we will de definitely get either x eighty six sixty four or any. Let's do plus again. Let's plus here, and then we just get package star. Just type it, type it like this. Let's see. So let's do just ls and multiple packages, and that works nicely as we can see. Oh, we missed this one. Yeah, so this is definitely always nice because I just matched just the word and word is exactly just you know from uh, small lowercase a to z to capital a to z and numbers so we want to do something like here so let's do the same a to z 
capital A to Z numbers and that's a plus numbers and slashes and dots okay so this is not simple as I thought yeah this is regex for you what am I doing no this is not what I want now hmm Mm -mm -mm. Let's not do numbers. Mm. This is better, but still not the Android tools. What's wrong with them? Dots. Well, Android tools. Hmm. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Because this is. <laughs> this is weird. Let me just try. Yeah, I should have prepared for this. So A to Z and minus. Hmm. What the hell? Slash this. Hmm. This is tricky. Oh, uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So this works. This, of course, that should work. Then, yeah, like this. Hmm. Probably this is not matching. Yeah, because this is not matching the underscores. And we have some stupid things like air. Ah, Jesus. <sighs> yeah, because there is probably no, no standard for the versioning, so... Uh, Jesus, okay, let's just do... And, and let's just take this. I could also probably I didn't do that, but I don't think it will be a much of a difference. Yeah, it's the same. My regex is still broken. So, so number dot underscore r r. Okay, I did this because slash r is something else. Matches a carriage return. Yeah, we don't want too much carriage return. And this. Until you see x60. Yeah. So let's do. Let's try this. Maybe it will let us go or not. Yeah, it works. Okay, let's do more tests. Let's actually do the. No. Okay. Let's do it without less. Blah, 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 blah. So this is just like testing, and then we will see how to do it in in Python. Um, because the preparing of the pattern is the most work in this. This this looks nice. Probably the Android tools was the most tricky. Let's see our highlight. Yeah, at the R7, yeah, as you said. So now, yeah, we get something like this. What the hell? How do we even do this? What's it supposed to mean? And this? Jesus. Start is happy now. Where is it? No. What the hell? Fuck Sark. Fuck it. So we will not match all packages. Some <laughs> some packages will just not match. And I will show the different way of not using our gigs. 
but that's still that is still not solved solve the issue. So, so it will be this will be another homework because you you can have multiple patterns. Like if if it doesn't match, try different uh, patterns. So we'll, uh, have a, something like uh, you know most uh, the highest priority, then the lower and ATC, and I guess this this is should should be the version. Let's just check. Slip. So yeah. The version is this, so perhaps we can still allow the for the slip. Okay, but for the well, I really don't want to do this. This is like because there are I guess git commits in the in the version, and this doesn't match why because there is a digit. We can allow that, and this is what. Hmm. Yeah, that will be our homework. Good luck. So, let's go to Sublime. Actually, let's test it first on some on some string. So now we get the i the r a r e r e is this secret lab server expression engine. Mm -hmm. That's a default, I mean, a standard library. To match all the packages with specific names. Yeah? Or you can you do some bash magic. I'm not perfectly, you know, I'm not all-knowing guy just do what I know so it's pretty short uh, uh, library as you can see but uh, get also the explanation here the special characters and ATC but what we want to do is use hmm, yeah we will use match I guess and then from the resu resulting uh, object we will catch the groups so let's ask for the help. So yeah, match pattern. So I can do this, but for some reason I think this is safe. This is no, no, no. This is not needed. This is for the R in front of uh, a string is used, uh, for example, in Windows Windows paths when you have like um, two slashes or the back slashes or what whatever. I think this this will work for R. Our, uh, purposes. Let's try it. So the first is pattern, then the string, and then you can get multiple flags. This is another string. The flags are like uh, because uh, I didn't explain that. Flags are after the whole uh, regex. You get like global and multi-line. In our case, we will do each uh, each package by one, so we don't need multi-line and global. We perhaps also don't need. Let's just see it, what it will do. Yeah, I didn't end. Uh, so we get some match object, and we get the match. So let's save it. Okay, and OK has now groups. And it's not what we want. How did it match? S H A syntax highlighting. Yeah, exactly, correctly, but not as we want it. Because as I did this, it broke the thing. No. Yeah, it did. So. Mm. Yeah, there is much work to be done. Regex is not my best. Yeah, so you see the packages with the numbers in it will not match correctly, and because that, that then then it will go to the other group. So you would either need. Um, 
Well, the best would be to. Yeah, I will explain that in here. So let's just uh, use different regex. So for the specific package, I don't want the numbers in here. So OK, groups will now be correct. So you get the idea. In our script, we have another function for matching names and versions in packages. So let's do def. get name and where package name so where match so the pattern will be defined just here it's okay you can have multiple patterns which will be your homework yeah this is okay perhaps So, yeah, let's do it with R, because the, the backslashes are, actually, let me just find it, Python string, mm, is it suffix, prefix, prefix R. So a string literal, it's probably lexical analysis. Yeah, so that's, uh, I really don't understand, um, you know, the, I just, Remember the backslashes are somehow and scope. Yeah, this is pretty complicated. Just remember. Yeah, perhaps this will be nicely explained. The R means that the string is to be treated as raw string, which means all escape codes will be ignored. Yeah, because normally that is good explanation. Yeah, and you can follow that to dig deeper. Normally you would use, uh, you know. If you have a string like hello, and then this, this will be like uh, you know, it will escape the this ap apostrophe, like single quote. But um, if I didn't do that, well, this will still somehow work. But for regexes, I just do R, it's a raw string. So, anyways, pattern and package name. And then we can just uh, the groups is a tuple, yeah. so we can un unpack it. So just return name and where, and name where will be. We can do that directly. This well, let's not do that actually. Because you can also have, we can have uh, if not match, we'll have that on false. Yeah. So if match, uh, actually let's do if match, then we, then we get name and where, else we return false. Or, yeah, false is okay for, for our purposes because the name and where will be just. Well. No, because we we are expecting we will be expecting two um, variables name and where, and if we just return false, let's just do this. This is not perfect, but it will work for our purposes. You can make it better again. Match groups this. So because we know we have only two groups in the in the regex, group one two, so it will work for. Our purposes again. So let, we have the function. Let's implement it here. So we just add to the dict again. This is the dict. This is the key. And yeah, let's put it up actually. Name and where. this so I didn't have uh, uh, to do the false false let's just do false because I will do it now right like this get name and where function from the hmm 
one thing I have to do is in the script I'm getting the full path so actually yeah I'm getting the full path of it so I could uh, I could have uh, in the script some way how to get just the file name not the full path but I don't have it it's somewhere somewhere in the in listing all files because this is the file name and I'm I'm just uh, returning the whole result anyways I can do nasty nasty thing like this so for example we get oops we get this full path and we are sure that there will never be uh, a slash in the file path so we can do find and this goes well what I wanted to explain mm, add find I want to find the last slash which, is, which gets 21 so what find does is that's on the lowest index well, actually I find that the highest index in, in the string where substring sub is found yeah so then we get uh, the number so what that means that if we print this again let's actually do uh, how is it name yeah and <laughs> that's very interesting very important because in the I would I would fill the file path and I just need um, the package name so that's <laughs> very important anyways if I do name I'll find uh, slash I get 21 in this case so then I will do name print from 21 oops yeah so opposite way, this is print to 21, this is print from 21. And let's do plus one. Because we don't want to print the uh, slash, yeah? So this is the way. And this is actually, uh, explain. Uh, I can explain the alternative to regex on this. So this. So we get the package name like this. Yeah, we can also do that. We can do like package name split and we can split by well if you split it by default this this is there are no spaces in here we could do this uh you meant the whole whole full, full path okay we can also do name split this and then get the last element Oops. Yeah, that also works. That's just different way of doing things. But uh, yeah, let's get to the package name again. So you get the idea. You could split. You could split by or find by um, yeah. Let's do split. Split by this. And in this case, it's sort of works. You get the package name, the version, and then this is like the version and the revision, I think it's called. Can I correct? Let's, let's ask. Well, I, th I guess it will be the whole. Uh, yeah, version is just uh, the whole thing. Well, you see what are we doing because everything is in, in the Basma database and we are just uh, do, doing some crazy reverse engineering but for all the learning purposes this is ideal. So, you know, you can do this and then, you know, like say the first element is name, you know, the second and two is, well, you cannot do this but uh how to yeah from uh one to two no from 
like this. Yeah. And you could do something like join the list so we get <laughs> yeah you, get, you can get version like this but this is for just for some cases so in this uh, logic you would have like oh it, it, it didn't match so I will not try the pattern again I will try pattern 2 or doing some other logic so it's really up to you um, how do you want to do it but Again, this case is really specific and not ideal. Let's check what how much time we have here. It's just 20 minutes. So let's do it quickly and then let's do the just a web uh, like um, really short web presentation. It will not be uh, any workshop, just a presentation. So mm -hmm. first I wanted to do this package name. Let's not do any breaks. No time for breaks. Just uh, just twenty minutes. So we had we had the package name. It's not name. It's the file path. So it's very important. And then we get get name and package where from package name, which is the name and where. Well, we just have. Uh, can do have this and if not name and where which will which will be the in case of the false well if you get it then save it otherwise just skip it you know so name this is not ideal perhaps you, you can do it more nicely but I'm really not, I'm really rushing, so that's the result. So first and second, and let's test it. So if I run it, it will tell me what. Um, where is it? Python file exists. So I will just remove it or just do this because I'm lazy. And yeah. Maybe I will get some money to buy the Sublime. Now it works and get the results. So we see we have name and where now. So it wasn't as simple as I thought. Yeah, for example, this you can see there is no, it didn't match. And you can just go here, see what it did, and you see there is the you know, there is the number. And if I do it, it will break break their gigs. So it will not for the not work for the packages with name in it, name in it, I mean number in it, and some other cases. So that's like your homework to do it if you like. I will not force you to do it, but this is like good training, I would say. So that's it. Um, I will not. Uh, I will just uh, finally do some. Cause you can see, there is lots of things to. Uh, commit and I'm, my iPad notebooks are not uh, edited properly. You know, it's all, already also behind behind the yeah, I have to just do the git stuff. Anyways, that's it for the file starter. Uh, just a sec, a phone call.
I'm back. Uh, it's something from. Yeah, so that, that was our break. Yeah, so that was five minutes, and we have thirty minutes. Nice. So we get to the f uh, web stuff. Mm, where is my? Yeah, it works. Mm, yeah, so it, as I said, ninety minutes or so. With the break, it will be hundred and thirty-five. Uh, I mean, 95 minutes. Anyways, uh, so that's Flask. It's in repository. So, oops, what? Oh, not Python, that's man. So that's a lot of, well, not, not too many, but uh, yeah, because five Python uh, Flask has, uh, so that's Python 2, Python Flask script, just for yeah, this is main what we want, and then if you search uh, the or get much more stuff, and if you do pip search, get even more stuff. Well, that's not too huge, but if you compare to Django, it's Django has more things. Well, this is somehow short. There are definitely like hundreds, or at least thousands, maybe thousands of uh, modules. Anyways, Flask is a micro framework for Python based on Werkzeug and Jinja 2. Uh, Werkzeug is a German tool for instrument and implement because Django is like a huge framework. Yeah, that's perfectionist with deadlines and also this cool movie. And we have uh, like also Pyramid Python. It's under web framework, and I haven't tried it much, but uh, you know you have to write a little bit more stuff. And I'm not sure about the plus or advent—I mean, advantages or disadvantages. I know I just know Flask uh, a little bit. So in two weeks, I we will have some more, a little bit more workshop about about that. Or more thing I wanted to show is Python. Yeah, just my frameworks get uh, you know tense. Yeah, so it's just not these three. So popular is Django Turbo Gears. I haven't heard about it. There are some tutorials and Web Web to Pi, which is a little bit older. But Turbo Gears is also also works nice, I guess. Yeah, the logic is pretty complex in this, exposed, nice, probably not so friendly uh, for beginners, but uh, yeah, then you get, where is Flask? This page sucks. Yeah, popular non-full, ah, so Flask is non-full stack framework, <laughs> bottle. Hug, cherry pie, kiss.py, you know, it's way too much stuff. Anyways, I know a little bit about Flask and I can recommend uh, Flask uh, mega tutorial from this M Miguel uh, Greenberg, is his name? Greenberg, yeah. So he gets uh, nice tutorials and also like. Yeah, the mega tutorial which was updated recently, I think, the, from the, let's just uh, go here, no, oh, this is a cast, sorry, I meant, I meant this, yeah, so hello world perhaps was updated recently, yeah, nice, because it was a little bit outdated, uh, like, last time I, uh, last summer I checked it, and you get like, um, let's zoom in a little bit, you get like how you how you should form your directory, you know the um, also underscore init and I mean the underscore routes, then do some exporting and specific things to get just this page. I mean we can get this page with this as well, but uh, you know here here he explains a bunch of other things which are pretty important 
for um, for building your whole uh, web, so you can deploy it and manage it easily. Because there are lots of uh, lots of lots of um, specific things, and so that's that's Flask. Actually, let's just try it. Try it a little, uh, really short. I think if I do some, if I just run it in IPython, it will not be. Yeah, it will not do what I want because I have to. Yeah, let's do it as as the page says. So Python, maybe no. Make your flask. Then. Make it hello by the same inject it and we so we save to the flask app. Yeah, you can just specify the environment variable flask app. That is a hello app and flask run is no it's flask. No. Exactly as it says. Get the idea. And you get it running on the localhost. That's it. You know, because it's um, yeah, localhost, just localhost. Uh, if you want to uh, send it to the whole network, that would be zero zero zero, the IP four, and you get see you get to see that this localhost accessed it just now. There is no five icon, and uh, HTTP one was successful. Yeah, this is just. Uh, in development mode, yeah. Do not use it in production because that's just uh, perhaps that's the debug, debug flag. No, it's not here, but um, it's elsewhere. Anyways, it's all explained nicely here, and that's one of the tutorials that is like the whole documentation, and you know, it's very nice. Quick start, minimal application. Yeah. As I said, visible server, so flux train host 000. And you know, if you if you get to the deployment, perhaps you will do it as well, but I cannot promise anything now. You set up uh, like uh, middleware from the Vert site, and I mean, you get different uh, deployment options. So, AVS, I guess, as you mentioned, or OpenShift. Roku are doing uh, doing it uh, like ah, oh, just some Ruby stuff. Yeah, this is the AVS AVS thing. Yeah, so it's pretty well documented. It's not like uh, it's not nothing um, too specific. I mean, not well known. It's, it's well, well supported, I would say. So that's Flask. And yeah, I will think of some useful web, public, web, web application which is easy enough but hard enough uh, to you know learn, learn on a little bit. But uh, you know, I will probably just read the Flash Mega tutorial and have some specific uh, use case. For example, I saw some restaurant which was ultimately broken, or some web shop or a shop. Or some other other things, so that can be fixed a little bit. I mean, I will do, I will target my um, use cases for these 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 things. But we have we could have something like the PTB uh, web format. Uh, I mean web, web form, and you know something related to Arch. Yeah. One other thing, which is not perhaps mentioned here, the database. Well, perhaps it is. Database is. Yeah. So plus SQL alchemy. So SQL alchemy. That's pretty. I really like it. It's nice recommendation. Features home to community binary. Reference. No. Uh, recipes. Yeah, 
to the some tutorial, but where's the documentation? Anyways, this is yeah, the library page is nice enough because uh, the Mike Mike Bear is the author of the of the uh, thing, so that's 2004 and 2015 talk. So in there's a SQL core, so definitely it has to be somewhere. Let me check no. Where is it? They change the pages somehow. Oh, well, because there is SQL core and then ORM, the object related mapping. It has to be somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, because you get the ORM and uh, the object related relation mapper and just the core. So. Uh, I cannot explain it properly. Yeah, two minutes. Good. Uh, because the core is just um, directly accessing the, the database, and in contrast to the ORM domain centric mode of usage, it uses the SQL stuff, and ORM doesn't because that uses Python objects. I'm not sure. Don't listen to me. Uh, but what is important is in this library. You get these talks, so and this is like uh, interesting because I'm not sure. Yeah, Alembic is probably now. My point is that uh, you can use, for example, MySQL and uh, use SQL Alchemy to map it, and then move it to the other um, to your application. So you can just uh, like dump the dump the database and re reuse it. But uh, my point is, this is the recommendation for the talk. This is like all talks, but introduction to SQL Alchemy. Okay. So it's like so, and then that's just three hours uh, of uh, tutorial, but it's very very good. Uh, you get uh, like specific um, specific um, cases. Uh, there are no subtitles, but uh, it's pretty enough. Perhaps uh, it's in good quality enough. Uh, it's shitty quality, but um, you can read it. And you get uh, like 13 or more, yeah, 50 uh, cases where Mike Bear, Mike Bear um, explains the SQL alchemy. And this is like very easy, very, very good way, you know, just to monkey see, monkey do. Uh, use his slides and the materials and work with him to get the SQL alchemy because that goes uh, we will definitely not do the SQL alchemy because that's uh, that's for hours of, uh, of uh, videos and I'm, I'm not so good at it but definitely I recommend this and uh, working with, uh, with web applications in general because um, I, I would say that the SQL alchemy is like uh, it's like standard standardized way how to yeah so this is ended Exactly like you want it, while through ended and the script ended. Um, so SQL Alchemy is uh, like one way to use all kinds of databases. So you might have your web application working with SQL, right? Just for testing, and then you can move it quite easily to like PostgreSQL or MySQL or whatever, whatever database it supports, and you know, without too much hassle. So you don't have to know uh, each specific database, specific use cases, and you don't have to rewrite it too difficultly. You can do it nicely. Monkey see, monkey sue, monkey see, monkey do is a good way. We will not talk about uh, evolution and stuff. Monkey do, you know, it's just it's some code. It's a pigeon style stealing appeared in my what? Whatever. Let's not delve into that. So that's SQL alchemy. Mm, and you have a bunch of tutorials for that. We will just just do some web uh, simple web application with uh, fast SQL alchemy, and we will not dig uh, into the stuff too much. We will just directly use it. But that's like in two weeks uh, soonest. Yeah. If we look, have a look on what other things I have here. Yeah, so we could have, yeah, 
So, I mean, one of our projects we had before was um, uh, like, um, well, I want to say, say, say it, it's too, too secret. Anyways, um, I might, uh, we might uh, resurrect it and uh, do some stuff about it. Anyways, uh, we could do some like uh, using Twitter, Google search and other um, social, social sites to get uh, searching about topic X and then generating some results, not in command line, but in uh, in web, web application. Same as we could do it with, uh, with our, you know, result uh, JSON the, for the, for the file setter. You know, so this is pretty hard to read just like that. So we could have uh, some JSON parser to, you know, so you would click uh, on the package and get the results like this. ATC there, un unlimited options. So that's it for our uh, today's class. Sorry, it was a little bit uh, rushy again. And yeah, just 20 minutes short, you know. Any questions? Let's collect it to the next uh, uh, next session. So as I said, that will be the thirteenth. I have it here in the Sublime. I Sublime here. Topic RC. Cancel. I didn't want it. So that will be this. Let's change the topic, and that will be our end. Topic data analysis. Yeah, whatever. API shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will do the homework, uh, well, yeah, the homework uh, will be, I will link it to the git in here. So it will be like, there will be folder with the homeworks. Uh, so that will be the file setter with, with the regex uh, complex thing and the simple simpler way of, of uh, where is it, six of this this thing uh, to do overwriting on single line yeah that's it thanks see ya where is it where is it where did you run away here it